Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're gonna to take a look at how to calibrate the extruder on your 3D printer. Now, before we get started, if you would, please click that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, that helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, gets the channel promoted more, and gets more people watching these. That said, let's get started. Calibrating your extruder. It sounds really complicated. A lot of people don't do it. Uh, for that reason, everything you've ever seen on this channel until this video, uh, all of the prints I've shown you, all of my printer profiles, they're all done on machines that are not calibrated. The printer profiles are dialed in for factors, machines still with their factory settings. Um, the reason for that is I realize most people don't want to mess with this, and that's fine. A lot of people don't. There's nothing wrong with that. Corality has done a really amazing job of giving you a great machine out of the box. But if you want to get that last couple of percent of quality, this is something you're going to need to do. And it's simple. We're just coming up with two numbers. We want to come up with an E-steps number to input in your LCD, and we want to come up with a new flow percent to input in Cura. Now to do this, we're gonna to have to do some measuring and some math, and I'm gonna walk you through every step of the way, and it's really simple. In between that, we're gonna run a test print. This new test cube is linked in the video description as well. Like I said, I'm gonna walk you through each step. It's really simple. We're just gonna do some test prints, we're gonna do some measuring, and we're gonna do some math. That's it. So let's get started. All right, in order to calibrate your E-steps, you're gonna need a calculator, a Sharpie marker, and a way to measure the filament. Now, for the second part of this video, when we're running calibration cubes, you are going to need a set of digital calipers, um, and they will work for this step too. Uh, but if you don't have digital calipers and you just want to calculate your E-steps, you can do it with a steel ruler. Do not use a cloth or plastic measuring tape like you would use for sewing. Those can stretch a little bit and they are not as accurate. You do need at least a steel ruler or digital calipers. So that said, uh, I do have a link for digital calipers in the video description from Amazon that aren't too expensive if you don't already own a set. Um, we're going to start off with heating the printer up. Now, you want to put this to about the temperature range that you normally print at. If you go too hot, the filament is going to feed too easily and it won't be as accurate as, um, it won't give you an accurate representation of what you're actually feeding at your normal print temps. Uh, next step, we're going to mark off from the point the filament enters the extruder back up towards the spool 100 millimeters. Once that is done, make a second tick mark 10 millimeters beyond that. So you've got two tick marks, one at 100, one at 110. The reason for this is if you're slightly over extruding and that first tick mark enters the extruder, you're not going to know how much actually fed in. You'll be able to subtract what's left from the second tick mark from uh, and figure out what uh, actually ran through the system. So. Next step, we're going to go to the LCD menu, move axis, extruder, go down to one millimeter and crank it up to 100 and let it feed 100 millimeters through your system. Now, in my case, I came up short. It did not feed the full 100 millimeters. Uh, it's 11 millimeters short. So in actuality, I fed 89 millimeters of filament through when it thought it was feeding 100. So. I need to check and see what my current E-steps are. You do this by going to the menu, going to control, then motion, and then go down to steps per millimeter and see what your E-step rating is. So mine is 93, yours should be too. This is the stock factory setting. So the first calculation we're gonna make is we're gonna take 100, which is our intended length, Multiply that by the current E-steps number, which is 93, or if yours was different, multiply it by whatever that number is, but for a stock Ender 3 or an Ender 5, it should be 93, and that gives us 9300. So write that number down. Next calculation, we're going to take that 9300 and divide it by however much filament fed through your system. In my case, it's 89 millimeters. Uh, you could be over it. You could have over extruded and it might be 105 or 106. You could have 92 millimeters. But whatever amount of filament you fed through your system is that second number. Okay, so 9300 or divided by, in my case, 89 gives me a new E-step number of 104.4. So 
I'm going to go back to my E-steps and dial that new number in, 104.4. And then this is very important. I'm going to go up to Control, Motion, and Store Settings. You must click that. Otherwise, the next time you power your machine off and back on, that new number is going to be lost. So make sure that you hit Store Settings. And then I'm going to run it through again, another 100 millimeters, same process, and just test. And that tick mark is right on the opening, so I'm dead on where I want to be. I told it to feed 100 millimeters, and it's fed 100 millimeters. Now, next step is to calibrate your flow. We know it's feeding the right amount of filament through, uh, but that doesn't always mean our slicer is going to calculate things right. And so the second phase of this is finding out the correct flow number for your slicer. So what I want you to do is whatever profile you're using, change the flow to 100%. And we're going to run the test cube that is linked in the video description here out. So load that test cube in your slicer. And you're going to want to make sure that the wall thickness is set to 2 if you're using a 0.4 millimeter uh, nozzle. Um, this cube is designed for calibrating uh, 4 millimeter nozzles. The walls are exactly 0.8 millimeters wide, so you'll get two shells. So your shell numbers should look like this, 0.8 and 2. And what that's going to do when it slices, it's going to give you two perfect walls. And when we run this out, it's going to look like this, and it should measure 0.8. In my case, it's measuring 0.92. That's too thick. I'm over extruding still. So I'm going to take my desired width, which is 0.8, divide it by my average of 0.9. And when you measure your cube, you're going to want to measure it at least once on each side. So you want to take four measurements and average them. Some people take two measurements for eight total and average them. In my case, my average was nine. And I come up with a number of 88.8. .8. That's my new flow percentage. So I'm just rounding that down a hair. It's always best to be a little under extruded on these. So I'm going to put in 88% as my correct flow. Um, now, that said, when you do this, uh, be aware for a miniature, for a terrain profile, this is the number you want. For a miniatures profile, you're going to want to use a number under this. Now for me, I am using 84% for my miniatures profile. I've taken 4% off of this. Uh, for small 28 millimeter miniatures, you do want to under extrude some. It will fix a lot of stringing and blobbing issues. And it's simply because of all the tiny movements on this, all the tiny layers, um, it, it's really hard to regulate the uh, pressure in the melt chamber. If you're printing a larger model, it's not an issue. For something tiny with small arms, legs, swords, spears, um, you need to help the printer out a little bit and under extrude, and you'll get a much better quality miniature. So whatever your number is, back it down 4 or 5% for your miniatures profile that you're using. Now, uh, run this again and with my 88 and my shell walls come out perfect now that's it that's as it's a simple process to get your machine perfectly tuned for extrusion uh, thank you for watching please click that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner